Hello and good morning to all of you. My name is Rashmi and today I am here with one of the beautiful poem Ode on a Grecian Urn written by John Keats. Though John Keats has written a number of great odes like Ode to Nightingale, Ode to Autumn, Ode to Psyche, Ode to Melancholy, etc. But this is one of my favorite ode. And today's lecture, we will discuss this Ode on a Grecian Urn and we understand the summary of this poem line to line. So uh, the lectures, today's lecture uh, would be quite long. So keep patience and enjoy. Okay, so uh, let's start. So before going to the text, let's discuss an introduction of this beautiful poem, Ode on a Gratian Urn. As the title, Ode on a Gratian Urn, as you know very well that this is a beautiful poem written in an odd form, odd actually it's a poetic form in which a poet address to something or to someone. So here the poet or John Keats, he is addressing the Grecian urn. Urn, you know, urn like a pot, that means you can say kalash. So here the poet addressing the Grecian urn and this is a very beautiful poem written and express the very beautiful ideas and thoughts of the poet. So, uh, if I talk about this poem, the Ode on the Gratian Urn, it was written in the spring of 1819 and the very inspiration to write this poem to have been derived partly from a marble urn belonging to Lord Holland on which was curved a scene of pastel sacrifice such as one that is described in the fourth stanza. And we can say this ore has for its main theme as not the sensuous beauty of the marble described, but the contrast between the permanence of art and the transitory nature of human life. Means if we talk about the theme of this particular poem, so it shows the contrast between the permanence of the art or eternity of art and the transitory nature of human life. Or at the very same time, it shows the mortality of the human life. So it shows the very uh, contrast between the permanent and the temporary. Okay. So this is the very theme. And its motto is, mortal beauties pass away, but not those of art. This is the very motto or this is the very message of this poem that mortal beauties pass away, but not those of art. Because... The art is permanent. It is it is a part. It is a piece of permanent. So here the poet or uh, the very narrator of this poem he shows this thing. Okay. So let's discuss the very uh, uh, text of this poem. As you can see here, this is the very first stanza of this poem. Thou is still unravished bride of quietness. Thou foster child of silence and slow time. Sylvian historian. Who can't thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than a rhyme? What leaf fringed legend haunts above thy shape, O deities of mortals or of both? In Tempe, O the tales of Arcady, both men or goats are these, what maidens loath, what made pursuit, what struggles to escape, what pipes and timbrels, what wild ecstasy. So the poem or this beautiful odd is start with a cautioning form. Here the poet or the narrator he asking a number of questions to the beautiful odd. Firstly he addressing him and says thou is still undavish pride of quietness and thou foster child of silence in slow time. Means here he addressing the odd and comparing the beauty of odd to a bride who is who is, un, is still untouched, pious and beautiful. And at the same time, he addressing him as a Sylvian historian. Sylvian historian, this word or these words have been asked a number of times in various exams. So uh, you should note this. Sylvian historian who can't thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than a rhyme means you are the thing which express beautifully the ideas or the thoughts than a rhyme, than our poems. What leaf fringed legend haunts about the shape of deities or mortals or both? 
Here he asked number of question to the odd. Firstly, he asked what type of leaf, what type of design inscribed on your surface, curved on in your surface. What type of legends are described on your surface? In Tampa, all the rails of Arcady, both men or gods are these. Means what type of men, god and goddesses are these who are described, who are inscribed or curved on the surface of the urn? What maidens loathe, what made pursuit, what type of girls they, they, they I mean there are some girls or they, there is a picture of some girls who are pursuing by uh, some maid, uh, some uh, maid or you can say that some boys. What struggle to escape and why they are struggling to escape? What pipes and timbers? Then he asked the next question. What type? What pipes and timbers? Means there are some musician who are sitting, and they are, uh, you know, they are playing the music. So the poet again asked a question to the uh, Grecian urn. What type of musician are these? What wild ecstasy? What type of wild wild ecstasy? Wild ecstasy means what type of you know what type of stories are these so he asked a number of questions to the Grecian and in the very first stanza then come to the next one this is the second stanza heard melodies are sweet but those unheard are sweeter therefore he shocked pipes play on not to the sensual ear but more endured pipe to the spread deities of no tone Fair youth beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Bold lover, never, never canst thou kiss. Though winning near the goal, yet don't grieve thee, she canst fade, thou, thou hast no thy bliss. Forever will thou love, and she be fair. Very, very beautiful lines. Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. The very first line, this is a very famous line of this ode. It has also been asked a number of times in various exams. So you should be noted this line. Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Means the music which we heard from our sensual ear. That is so sweet. That is, you know, sweet, but those unheard, but those feel by the heart that is more sweet ye soft pipe play on not to the sensual ear but more endured ye musician or these musicians who are playing a music that is very peaceful that that is very soothing not to the sensual ear but to the heart pipe to the spirit deities of no tone fair youth pipe to the spirit deities of no dawn means though the music which is playing by these musician musician who, who are the musician who are curved on the surface of the urn so these musicians playing a music which cannot be uh, you know which cannot be listened or hear by the sensual ear but it can be feel by the heart and that is more sweet. Fair youth beneath the trees, you can't not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Again, there is a picture where some boys, they are beneath the trees. Thou can't not leave thy song. I mean, again here, he's talking about the musician who are sitting near the tree and playing the music. So, he make the comparison that thy song is permanent thy music is permanent though the tree can be bare because it it sheds its all his leaves and it, it it should be i mean it will be barren but thou music remains forever because thou music gives senses pleasure soothing calmness to all to the coming generation, to the present generation. Thy song nor ever can those these be bare. You, your song can never be stale. It, it, 
it remains stress as as it is now then bold lover never never can't thou kiss again there is a second picture in which there are some boys who are pursuing some girls in order to kiss they are following some girls they want to kiss that girl so he addressing these boys and uh, addressing him uh, addressing them as a bold lover never never can't thou kiss you can never kiss this girl though winning near the goal though you are very near to your goal yet don't grieve but at the same time you don't to be worry because she can't be paid thou thou hast not thy place means the beauties of these girls it can never be paid it can never steal they they like beautiful forever forever though thou hast no thy bliss forever will thou love and she be fair and your passion your your love for these girls it it remains as as fresh as it is now it is it and uh, she will be beautiful she will be fair forever because you are not the part of the uh, you know transitory life but you are the very part of permanent part so here he make a comparison between the permanence of art and the transitory or the you can say mortality of the world or the human life okay so this is the second stanza come on the third one a uh, happy happy boys thou cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring adieu and happy melodies unweird forever piping songs forever new more happy love more happy happy love forever warm and is still to be enjoyed forever painting and forever young all breathing human passion far above that leaves a heart high sorrowful and clawed a burning forehead and a parching tongue so again it's a very beautiful stanza or the third stanza of this beautiful odd and here the poet saying that a oh, happy happy bowl thou cannot share here the poet addressing to a tree and he says to uh, the tree that uh, you cannot be worry because your leaves cannot be falling down that cannot be shared they cannot be falling down your leaves nor ever bid the spring at you means the season of the spring which is now at you it never gone it remains forever you never farewell to this spring season because you are the very part of art and art is permanent and happy melodies and weird for every piping song forever new and at the same time oh musicians you never tired means they are playing the music in the picture so he addressing to the uh, musician and said to them that uh, you never tired forever piping songs forever new means you are forever playing music and at the same time your songs for new forever more happy love more happy happy love then the third one third picture in which there are some boys who are following the girls more happy happy loves means you should be happy the boys or the girls you should be happy because your love it keeps warming it keeps enjoying forever forever painting forever young means your love it it remains forever it remains passionful forever and you keeps young forever all breathing human passion far above you are above above of all human passions because the human passion they decay with the passing of time but because you are the part of the permanence art so that's why you are above all the human passions that leaves a heart high sorrowful and clawed that leaves a heart 
high sulfuric chloride a burning chloride and a parching tongue means the art is above all the art is above the life because life is transitory nothing is permanent no passion no love no beauty nothing is permanent in this mortal world all decay with the passing of time but you all means the pictures which he described earlier these are all a part of a piece of art that's why these remains forever okay so this is the very beautiful stanza uh, written by john keats and described here so come come to the next one that is the fourth one what are these coming to the sacrifice to what green altar o mysterious priest leadest thou that hyper loving at the skies and all her silken flanks with garland rest what little town by river or sea shore or mountain built with peaceful citadel is emptied of this folk the spice mourn and little town thy streets forever more will silent be and not be a soul to tell why thou art desolate can ever return so this is the fourth stanza of this beautiful lord and here again the poet asking question to the urn what are these coming to the sacrifice means again there is a picture inscribed on the curve or the surface of the urn and he is asking a question to the urn that who are these persons who are these people who are and why they are coming for a sacrifice sacrifice because to green altar there is a, there is a altar or there is a uh, you know there is a, a small green altar where there is a priest leadest thou that high for loving at the sky means there is a, a high for who is decorated with garland with with flower garland and uh, and and this uh, high for is taken for the sacrifice so all a silken flanks with garland dress because this uh, high for he is uh, it is matlab uh, uh, you know it is a uh, beautifully decorated decorated for the sacrifice what little town by river or sea shore there is a town or there is a small village on the sea uh, shore or mountain built with peaceful citadel but at the same time the very you know the very uh, village it is empty this this is you know this is peaceful this is silent because all the people all the folk all all, all the Uh, villagers they are coming to the green altar where a small heifer is going to be sacrificed is emptied of this folk this pious morn pious morn why it is called the pious morning because a heifer is going to be sacrificed for some religious purpose and little town thy streets forever more will silent be at the same time he says to the village of the town that you little town thy streets forever be silent means thy streets or uh, the village it will remain silent forever and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate and there is because there is no person there is no one who can tell why the uh, you know why the village is so silent so it it remains always at the same can never written and no one is there who who tell about the, uh, the villages or the people means uh, where they have gone nobody have idea about that because because this is a part of picture this is a part of painting or this is a part, piece of art so whatever describe what are whatever paint in the picture that remains forever the same okay so this is the fourth one stanza now come to the next fifth one and the last one and the beautiful very very beautiful stanza of this beautiful lord o attic shape fair attitude with the breedy of marble man and maidens over wrought with forest branches and the trodden weed 
thou silent form those teases out of thought as do the eternity cold pastel when old age shall this generation waste thou shalt remain in midst of other woe then arts a friend to man to whom thou shest beauty is truth truth beauty that's all ye know on earth and all ye need to know again a very very beautiful stanza of this line i mean of this poem so what he is saying oh attic shape where attitude again he addressing again he addresses to the uh, gracious earth and call him attic shape fair attitude with breedy of marble man and maidens over road means you are a very beautiful urn in which there are a number of pictures paintings curved of marble and maidens over road i mean curved with forest branches and the torn weed at the same time there are some florid tales which uh, which which talks about the greek history or the legends or the you know legend of the heroic persons of the greek thou silent form toast is us out of thought means you are in a silent form because you are a piece of art so you are in a silent form toast is us out of thought as to the eternity means in the present time or in the coming time all the peoples they thought about you a number of ideas a number of thoughts came in their mind regarding these legends regarding these pictures or these paintings but you are silent cold pastel again he addressing the urn as a cold pastel because there are a number of pictures or paintings curved on the surface of the urn but nobody knows what the meaning of these pictures and why these pictures curved on the surface of the urn and what is the message of these pictures so here the urn is called pastel when old age shall this generation waste thou shalt remain when old age or the past or the or the present age shall this generation waste means this generation past and the coming generation came thou shall remain means you shall you remain silent at the same generation also in midst of other woe than art a friend to men means in the midst of midst of a number of thoughts or ideas came in the mind of the other mind of the number of people a friend to a man to whom thou seest maybe a friend he says to a man to whom thou seest beauty is truth truth beauty that in all ye know on earth and all you need to know this is the very beautiful message of this poem beauty is truth and truth is beauty which is beautiful that is truthful and that is truth which is also beautiful that ye all ye know on earth and all the persons ye know all the persons know this thing on this earth and who don't know they have to be known this thing means as john keats he is especially known as the poet of beauty and uh, we can say in all his poems he shows the permanence or the you know superiority of uh, beauty over the living world over the uh, sufferings or the pain problems of the world so here he says that beauty is truth and truth beauty which is beautiful that is truthful and that is truthful that which is also beautiful and all in this world all the person they have to know this truth they have to accept this truth so uh, today i have discussed this beautiful poem line to line and i hope now it's clear to all of you the meaning or the very uh, you know message of this poem now it's clear to all of you so if you have any query any question regarding any line or anything of this poem then you can write down in the comment box Thank you